welcome back to the mad world of this matrix. This is uh, chapter 11. The perfect world. We'll be getting into this matter of the perfect world. What is the perfect world? In the movie, The Matrix, in one scene, Agent Smith is describing the first Matrix world used to play out to those called in it. It was designed to be a perfect world. He said that this perfect world was a failure because people kept waking up from their induced sleep in their pods. The reason was discovered later by the machine that created the matrix that the human mind was made to live in a world of suffering and pain thus in the perfect world they kept waking up trying to find the suffering pain which was not in the first created perfect world. I've seen this movie many times before but this night these comments hit home. Let me attempt to share what it was I saw. Uh, it was powerful. Think in light of this comment made by Jesus. Be perfect, even as your Father is perfect. I've discovered in my other study that this word perfect is a view and perspective. Not necessary behavior. It's just our bad, poor perspective being in a fallen state, imperfect, fallen from what God had originally intended for humanity to be. In an imperfect world now. Something was lost that made it imperfect. Not necessarily the world. But something in man. His lack of ability to do something that's going to be coming out in this video. In Eden, there was no suffering and pain, correct? That's what most people believe. Most would say correct. We were taught that it came after the fall. With that in mind, here's another thought to reflect on. From which Adam left? We would think, as I said, that Adam left a perfect world. You ask yourself this question, are you sure? Perfect as to whose idea is opinion. Well, something came to light that changed my view of what a perfect world would be like. So this is what this video is all about. Our ideas of perfection have got to change. All these thoughts came in a flash and my moment flash in light of the above matrix scene along with other scenes from that movie. Now I have to share these above thoughts so you could get what will follow. I mean, I don't know. I've edited this thing about ten times now. I, I've recorded it twice. This is my third attempt at it, and each time I do it, I see, oh, I didn't bring that out. You know, I should have brought that out. Yet I read ahead in my other chapters of this book, Maybe of this matrix. And find out in a later chapter, this comes out even clearer. So, if you don't get this one, in the next few videos, in the next few chapters, this will make more sense. So, I'm going to give as much as I can give you now. I'm not going to edit it no more. I'm just going to give it as I got it right now. And, have a, as I said, I went ahead in my other chapters, and it brings it out more. Now, as to what I saw... What keeps us trapped in this experience? I got a lot of videos on about the distractions of this own reality. The distractions of the cares and fears of this life. The sufferings and pain that we go through. We can get so caught up in that distraction. It keeps us from ever consulting God. But in truth, which is going to be coming out here. All these suffering and pain. According as Paul said in Romans chapter 5, he got so he rejoiced in tribulation. You think, what was he, sadistic? 
<laughs> he rejoiced in tribulation. He realized that the tribulations, the cares affairs, the suffering and pains of this life and the experiences of this life was to eventually get us to grope after God. That's the whole purpose. And the book of Acts says that. Why all the divisions of the land and the people, the languages, remember that? It says there in the book of Acts, and I, I'm just going to, I'll flash it up to you on the screen there, where you can find it at. That all this was done that man hopefully might grow up after God and gain a perfect world, but you would have to be a perfect being to fit in a perfect world. So we're fallen. And if this world is striving for perfection today, we would never fit in a perfect world. That's what I said. Though the outward man is decaying, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, being made fit for a new existence. That was the problem. Adam changed. And God had to match the world to Adam's change. Before the fall, Adam was perfect. But after he fell, and his soul cut off his spirit, he became imperfect. You see this expressed in Romans chapter 8, where God subjected the world to futility, or a sense of unreality, because Adam became unreal. He became a rogue soul, cut off from his spirit, cut off from the will of God, and God had to match that so, because if he had not, I, we would have messed this world all up anyhow. <laughs> I know. You and me speaking, I, we're already doing that. We're changing beings in a changing world, striving to, to come some idea of perfection, yet we lack that perfection being cut off from God. It's impossible. You and me, impossible. This world will never find peace that it longs for, or unity, which could be coming out later in these videos, which came out in the Matrix. Man likes suffering pain. He likes war. He can't live without it. That's all we've ever known. It seems to be the norm. What's normal? <laughs> suffering, pain, death, dying, decay. That's all we've ever known. We would not fit in a perfect world with our mind, with our fallen souls. Only in our spirit are we considered perfect, complete, holy, in fact, from God. You would not fit. That's why I said the flesh doesn't enter the kingdom of God. So let me pick up what I leave off at. Well, I'll, I'll start here. Now to what I saw. This keeps us trapped in this experience. What keeps us trapped in this experience? The distraction of the cares and fears, the suffering and pain, which all came into play because of the fall of humanity brought out in the book of Genesis. The very same thing that the machines, they, they, got, they, they understood that. They didn't at first. They're trying to create some kind of perfect world. They found that. They kept waking up. They don't have perfect beings. The very same thing that the machines in the movie saw as an easy thing to keep people asleep to their true reality. They're fallen beings. They fell away from a true reality. From God. Thus engrossed in the created matrix world. The hope of a perfect world. Would wake them up. See it this way. They and we today. Were to be changing beings in a changing world. They being changing beings would not fit in an unchanging, perfect world. They needed this element of suffering and pain to beat the extreme of this boredom. They would be bored. So here's what the machines discovered, and what uh, Agent Smith brought out. He called it the primitive mind was discovered by the machines to be the problem with the humans. The primitive mind was patterned to pain and suffering, so it could not accept a perfect world. So the machines adapted the matrix to the 
human primitive mind. People stayed in that world <laughs> and did not wake up. They thought it was normal. They matched their personality and character, fallen. But there were those who would seek the perfect world, thus wake up, and then seek to rescue others from this matrix world geared to the human primitive world because of what Morbius called a splinter in their mind. The conscious, a conscious mind tries to bring us back to God and the Holy Spirit, waking the human spirit to have it wrestle with this primitive mind to bring us back to our sonship to who we were before the fall of Adam, before we were manifest as sons and daughters of men fallen, we were to be manifested as sons of God. All oh, this comes out of my other series, The Eternality of the Human Spirit. The first begotten, the new creation, has been developing this in light of this movie, coming from the Word of God. This movie is just for those who don't want the Bible, don't want to hear about God, Jesus, and the Bible. Well, watch this movie. You see people do that. Apart from God in the Bible, even Einstein saw that. He said this world is really a grand illusion. Though it has a sense of reality, but this illusion is very strong. There's got to be something beyond this fallen world. Whether they accept God or not, it's not real. It could have been something real. So I just stop and pause this recording. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to put everything I got in these other videos into this. I can't do it. I would recommend you go off and view the other videos. That brings this out even more. So let me continue on where I leave off. The primitive, the primitive mind was discovered by machines to be the problem with humans. The primitive mind was patterns of pain and suffering, so it could not accept a perfect world. So the machine adapted the matrix to the human primitive mind. People stayed in that world and did not wake up. But there were those who would seek the perfect world, like Neo. Thus, wake up, and then would seek to rescue others from this matrix world geared to the human primitive world because of what Morpheus called a splinter in the mind. Something I would deal with more in another chapter. That's going to come out in another chapter. They were hunted down, rejected, seeing that those who would disrupt the matrix. Agents were sent by the machines to stop this. Yet one agent in particular, Agent Smith, now he's, he's a good type of the Antichrist, of Satan. Agent Smith had a totally different idea that conflicted even with the machines and human beings. He sought to not only destroy humans, but also the machines. Everything. Sound familiar? Come down to Matthew 24, 22. Except those days should be shortened, there would be no flesh to be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. i got videos on that. Take with me for a moment. Maybe this will be a, come out clear a little, a little later on here. The average person spends more time focusing on suffering, pain, right and wrong, good and evil. Just sit and watch a few hours of TV and you get the picture, you know. They're engrossed in it. Any hope of a perfect world is always overridden by this constant focusing on the non-perfect. To get away from it is a real task. You find yourself surrounded by it all. To think everything, to, to, to think anything to the contrary, you're seen as odd and you get this, you aren't real. This is the way that it is, it always has been. You aren't going to create a perfect world here. No one's perfect. So you learn to accept it. Then you have utopian dreamers that go to the other extreme. 
going to their extreme, thinking they, they can create a perfect world in a world not designed for perfection. Remember, God subjected this world to futility, a sense of unreality, to match the fallen condition of man, to get him out of this world. Again, something I will bring out mo more in other chapters, what comes out in my other videos as well. I believe the confusion comes in the use of the word perfect. Remember that? Perfect. Forget the dictionary definition of the word perfect. Not necessarily the definition of the word, but rather more on, this lo lo on the lines of what this movie was trying to say. In the movie, when they did wake up, here's where the movie breaks down. You have to reach beyond the movie to see what I saw. In the movie, when they woke up and left the Matrix, they did not enter into a perfect world, remember? They went from a Matrix world, a computer-generated computer world, a virtual reality, plugged into a machine, and when they unplugged them, they would wake up in, in the in that ship or in that city, Zion, under the earth, underground. Because they scorched the earth and the skies so that the machines couldn't get power from the solar power they were getting from. That's why they put men in pots, created them like a battery, remember? The energy come from a human body and raised men for the source of energy for the machines, remember that? All right, and so in the movie, they would wake up. Here's where the movie breaks down. You have to reach beyond the movie to see what I saw. In the movie, when they woke up and left the movie, they, they did not enter into the perfect world. It, too, had pain and suffering. It was only a more real expression of the primitive mind of men. The machines in Matrix only used it for survival. Using the pods as energy packs, sleeping humans in pods Linked to the Matrix world was geared to the pleasing of their primitive minds. Minds, fall minds, the fall minds of the curse of Adam. Now what is meant by the primitive mind? It's the sin nature of Adam, the fallen nature of Adam. We all were born with. We see it in the Matrix as well as in Zion. The city underground. It is my belief beyond this movie in Hollywood that the original habitat of humanity was only perfect. Now hear this part. And that Adam and Eve, if they had stayed in contact with a true source of power, the human spirit hooked up to the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit to the Father, if they had stayed in contact with a true source of power, could have de dealt with any situation they would have arrived in this perfect world of Eden. It wasn't perfect. They were perfect. And they were to keep it and subdue it, remember? And the word, God commanded them to keep the garden. He speaks this very thing. Even Eve herself was loud in this perfect world. They could have kept them out. They had the power. It only became an imperfect when by underhanded craft of crushing what God has said, evil got them to cut themselves off from their true source of power. Saying, you got power. You got accumulated knowledge. You don't need to have contact with God. You're eternal beings. But which he didn't know at that time that they were. They had power. Beyond measure. Adam's power kept him alive for 930 years. Imagine what was in the power pack of his mind. It was only imperfect when underhanded craft of questioning what God has said, evil got them to cut themselves off from the true source of power. God, and to start acting independent, sin from God. They then were unable to deal with what was ahead of them. And now only limited power, power that would run out, thus bring in death. You see, Adam, 
and his generation living rather long lives, Adam would be 930 years, beyond Adam's world. And the day after the biblical class, you can trace how humanity began to die sooner and sooner. Till you reach David, who lived to be 70 years of age. I have just this matter at greater length in my book, Rights of the Unfallen Adam. What I shared gives you at least the understanding of what a perfect world was meant to be. Only a place to exercise the rights of an unfallen Adam. After their fall, they returned to the world which only Adam and his generation experienced, a world to the extreme, barren, which doesn't say it's strong enough. Remember, Adam and his generation were far superior to us today. We would be considered a hothouse breed of Adam in comparison. Because of their superiority, that fallen world was to the extreme. How do I know this? After the world flood, Noah is told that his world would be relieved of the curse on Adam's generation. It was even predicted of him to be such. Seasons, for one, return that Adam did not know, along with winds and rain, which Adam's generation also never knew until they had a flood. <laughs> they found that real quick. There's more to this matter which will come out later. For now, I hope you get the gist of what I saw that night watching the Matrix. So that's the end of that chapter. And I have to get this other thing edited and set it up so we can hear more about the Matrix. Let me see. Let's go ahead real quick. And it's chapter 12. The Spirit searches all things. We'll be doing that in the next video. So God bless you. I hope you got something out of this.